Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And by the title of the video, you might have guessed it correctly and realized it, of course, that this is a bit different than what we usually do. This is not a travel video because I haven't been traveling lately, but I did talk about it that I will try to post about things that I am, you know, aware of, things that I know a little bit, and I would love to share all this knowledge with you all people. This video is definitely about data analytics, data visualization. Recently, there was a you know um, a competition from Maven Analytics. So the ones who are into you know analytics and all, they might know about Maven Analytics. And if I Google it, I can show you. Um, so this was, yep. So this was the recent um, challenge from Maven Analytics and this was the very first time I was taking part in any of such challenges and um, it was based on World Cup. I love uh, you know sports and sports data analysis so I thought to give it a try and the moment I uploaded my solution, my visualization to uh, on LinkedIn, you know people loved it really and there were a few people who asked about how I did it, you know which kind of visuals I used, kind of techniques I used, all those things so I thought oh, why not to make a video because this is a kind of community where we learn by sharing even I'm a beginner in uh, you know Tableau and uh, I'm learning from other people from other resources so that's why I thought of making this video so as I've already mentioned the tool that I've used um, is Tableau and I'll come to all of this so this was basically that um, challenge so World Cup challenge they have some data you can check your data over here. One day, two, three, four, five. I guess five or six. Uh, yeah, six data sets they have given. All the data sets have their uh, respective data, World Cup matches, squads, everything. And the question was like, uh, I mean, the problem statement was like, for a chance to win, blah 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 blah. A country's history with the World Cup, their road to Qatar, and their expectations for this year's tournament so this is where i started so let me quickly show you uh, so this is my tableau profile basically and tableau is my go-to tool so for the one uh, so the ones who don't know me uh, tableau is one of those data visualization tools there are more others like power bi and all but i usually prefer tableau because i feel like it has you know a lot more to offer than you know power bi or anything but power bi of course has its own benefits it's easier and all the stuff I'm not getting into at this point of time. So this is my Tableau uh, public profile and this is how it looks like. I mean, yeah, of course there are quite a few naive, you know, basic visuals that I've kept in. I'm still in the learning curve. And the last two, if, if you see, they are really like, I feel like these were one of the best I have created. This was a resume, an, an interactive resume, but I'm not going to talk about this at this video. But this is the one that I'm talking about. So if you haven't seen that post in my LinkedIn, so this is the visual that I was talking about. This is the dashboard that I've created. So this is how it looks like. Um, I, I can just uh, go through it quickly. FIFA World Cup 2020. We have a Sankey chart here. So Sankey chart basically means if you i mean if you just hover around them you will get some data so 1962 chile won chile was sorry chile was a host and brazil won it 1958 let me see who was the host 1958 sweden was the host brazil won it again 1990 italy was the host germany won it similarly like um, who hosted which year that also you can have a look and also um you know which country won in which year that also you can have a look so this is basically a sankey chart this is what we know as then we see qatar 2022 and the cup is still there standing alone it needs a hand it needs the you know it's waiting for the squad to pick it up then we have some options so all those options you can select any of your countries let's say i select my favorite one brazil so I've selected Brazil, you can see, okay, it's taking a bit time, it shouldn't, but not my issue. Uh, Brazil, you can see the country has been selected. Top scorers, you can see who are the top scorers for Brazil in international football. And then you have how many World Cup goals they have scored. It's a normal table. Um, 
coming back to this is the last four year analysis total matches how many matches did brazil play how many wins out of 44 they won 31 that's quite a good number i believe total goals for is 99 and they've considered only 19 goals that's again a good thing total clean sheets have been 27 great great numbers there's a win percentage on, uh, in 2019 they had 50 then 100 percent then 75 then 87 so it's like you know up down up down it's going but still i would say it's in a great number it's, it's in the great range opponents break up so which all opponents they have played how many matches they have played how many matches they have won all the details about that for example peru they have played seven matches they have won six of them that's a crazy number tournament breakup you can see the tournaments they have played copa america uh, world cup qualification friendly so then we have the world cup analysis of brazil this is a squad we have and in the squad you can see uh, the median age of midfielders are 29 and 31 average caps the median age of goalkeepers are is 30 average caps is 28 median age of forward is 25 29 average caps uh, defender 52 a bit experienced uh, and i believe even they are age wise also they are experienced because they are 30 the median age is but overall it looks like a very good squad this is a club distribution, I mean squad distribution by club, few of them, three of them play for Manchester United, two play for, uh, one plays for Chelsea, two play for Arsenal, three play for Juventus. This is the World Cup performance chart, so you can see from 1930, so 1930 this, uh, the position was first round or group stage, whatever it was, 34 it is round of 16, 38 third place, similarly 1958 they were winners, 62 they were winner, um, 66 again, first round, 70 again a winner, similarly 94 winner, 98 runners, sub 2002 a winner, so overall Brazil we know why I love Brazil and why Brazil is such a great football nation. Then we have some head-to-head -head World Cup figures, select opponent from drop-down, we can select any of the opponents from here and you know, uh, these are all the World Cup op opponents that Brazil have played at any point in their, you know, World Cup journey. So if I choose Algeria, let's say, um, let's choose Argentina. So in Argentina, I can see they have played four matches, they have won two of them, they have scored five goals, four and they have conceded three goals. So which is a bit okayish kind of a you know number can we try something else germany germany two plays again one win three goals four and seven against not too good not too good all right so this is the overall um you know how this um a dashboard looks like the gist of the dashboard you can see there is a little bit um, you know formatting issue and this is definitely not my issue the problem is um, I am working on Tableau public desktop version so the moment I push my changes to this Tableau public server there is some kind of formatting issue happening and I have been struggling a lot about this. I have read all those things and they're, they're saying this problem is existing and since it's a, it's a free version you can't really help but yeah I, I know it ruins the you know um, the aesthetic of this whole dashboard because you create with all this hard works and all but uh, whatever it is. Alright, uh, getting back to the main crux of the video like how I created those charts. So if I go back to my desktop version so this is how I've created it. Um, let's start with Sankey. Just there are two complicated charts in this cha uh, dashboard and other than those two I don't really think there is much of complications. So this Sankey chart, this is a combination of five charts actually. It's not one chart. There is one Sankey over here. There is another Sankey over here. This is a third chart. This is a fourth chart. This is a fifth chart. So what usually happens is the moment you hover around this, these two Sankeys are highlighted and this particular year is highlighted. How we create this is, there is a lot of calculations going around here. There is a sigmoid function happening which, connect, which connects these dots and basically these dots are the copy of same data point so when i say copy of same data point it means that we need a copy of the same data set which means that we have to union the data set with the same copy 
so data set union has to be used over here and sigmoid func uh, functions are needed and um, you know how wide this thing is all those parameters are needed so i learned uh, obviously like this was the first time i used sankey chart so where i learned it from is simply youtube go over there click on sankey chart you can see this tableau wizard this is a very good video there is one art of visualization this is I, I believe this is the best video out there for Sankey so this too will be enough for you to understand it completely and that would be I believe more than enough then you can see there are some crazy Sankeys over there some circular Sankeys this also you can try I would definitely give it a try someday so this two video if you watch you will easily understand all the minute details about it as I'm not going through the you know complexities and intricacies of these charts now if you come back these are simply custom icons so I hope you know what custom icons are how custom icons work this is a normal table I don't think there's much to show over here it's a normal table and um, you know nothing much over here normal table with transparent background a lot of calculations are happening actually so if you read uh, about LOD calculation about table calculations so these things have been used a lot so this is something that you can look forward to because you know the data set that we got was not in such a you know sweet format or in good format that we could come you know could immediately use those values it was not in, a, in such a manner we had to play around with the data we had to do some calculations and with the help of those calculations um, we were able to generate these numbers so obviously the stable calculations LOD calculations you will have to read about a little bit if you want to read about this there is one more uh, channel I can tell you about it's a very good channel I learn a lot from this channel and that is known as probably one of the best channel for Tableau and this is this SQL bell I don't know if it is pronounced like that but this is the this is the one I'm talking about so if you see yeah there you go tableau calculation so all those things will give you a very good idea about how calculations happen and all in tableau coming back to this uh, visual this is a bar chart normal bar chart any person working in tableau can create this normal bar chart again a line chart um, again a lot of calculations have been used in this uh, LOD calculations and all um, opponents break up normal bar chart nothing much to show here this is a tree map simple tree map anyone can create this uh, this is also a bar chart I can just show you quickly there you go um, just a count of ID in columns and I'm dividing it by positions and in, okay if you ask me how I, sh uh, how, I uh, how I'm getting these values in, in the tooltip then in the tooltip you can see I have inserted a sheet and so on the basis of which position I am selecting so it is filtering down to that next sheet and the next sheet is nothing but um, let me show caps and its summary so caps and its summary is the next sheet so it is filtering on the basis of the position and then it is showing that particular result to me so you can definitely check this out how to insert uh, you know sheets in toolkits very easy this way you can insert you can insert any of the sheets um, whichever you want and you can just enjoy further more breaking down of your data now uh, this is also very simple a bubble chart nothing much to show over here this is something that I wanted to talk about so this is a circular bar chart so circular bar chart again there are two data points one data point another data point same data point of the same data set which means again you have to do a union for that data set there will be a lot of calculations there will be some uh, because it's a, it's a circular thing right it's an angular thing so there will be some calculations based on um, x axis y axis something based on uh, let's say sine and cos let me just show you pull that up quickly yeah there you go so there will be a lot of calculations like this cos angle sine you have to create some angle you have to divide those angles um, some indexing you have to do you have to decide on the radius what radius it will be because see this is in circular um, this thing there are 
basically two circle there is a inner circle over here and then there is a outer circle and that outer circle radius obviously depends on the basis of each point so on what basis it will depend that also you'll have to provide here so in my case it is like the maximum position that any country has got in that particular year so that's how it works you want to understand the intricacies of this this is uh, how you can check it out circular bar chart in youtube and this video is the master of all videos you don't have to see any other video this video will cover everything from basics if you if you follow it properly so the very first one so uh, that's it again a normal table and yeah one more important thing people were asking did you use figma or anything for the background no my friends i didn't use anything what i did was um there's an online very uh, you know there's an online free tool that generates gradient colors so you can you can go and just check for any of those free tools you can just uh free online gradient color uh, generator something like that you can just type in and you know all, all those all those um, sites you're seeing right they'll help you generate those colors so you don't really have to worry about this so I decided a primary color a secondary color and that is why I got such a beautiful gradient background for my um, visualization for my dashboard so I hope I answered few of you I know you know not everyone is tech savvy over here there are a lot of people who really don't have much idea but I tried my level best to cover as much possible and uh, I'm open to further details if required so keep learning thank you so much if you have watched this video till here hit the like button please share to subscribe and see you soon bye bye